for demonstration purposes, personal protection, such as gloves, is not always used in this video. Please adhere to universal precautions. Additionally, the wrist immobilizer, which is usually on at all times that the TR band is in place, has often been removed, in the video, for demonstration purposes. Wrist immobilization, post-procedure contributes to low-flow hemostasis. In this video, we will discuss the process for removal of the TR radial compression band and radial site management post-cardiac catheterization and or percutaneous coronary intervention. The TR band is a compression device designed to assist hemostasis of the radial artery after a transradial procedure. Through the transparent structure designed for visual control and selective compression of the radial artery to allow blood return and preserve patency. The TR band assists in maintaining radial artery patency at the time of hemostasis in order to prevent future radial artery occlusion. Prior to the procedure, a modified Allen's test or Barbo test will have been done to assure radial and ulnar artery patency prior to the procedure. You should receive written instructions with information related to 1. Timing of removal of the TR band as it relates to the patient receiving anticoagulation or not, please verify with orders in the EMR. 2. The amount of air in the TR band. 3. The time to start letting air out of the TR band. 4. The circumference of the arm just proximal to the TR band. This will give you objective data as it relates to the question if there is internal bleeding of the artery leading to edema. When receiving the patient, during handoff, pay particular attention to the radial site where the TR band is located. Swelling or absence of swelling, proximal and distal to the TR band should be assessed. Assess hand color and capillary refill of index finger or thumb of the affected hand. Capillary refill, when checked, should return in 5 to 15 seconds. Note that for your vitals, the BP must be taken somewhere other than the arm with the TR band. If you are not able to start letting air out at the designated time, it is usually okay, because there should be adequate circulation to the hand from the ulnar artery. But this must be assessed at each check by capillary refill or pulse oximetry of the affected hand's index finger or thumb. The goal is to remove the TR band as soon as hemostasis has occurred. If the TR band remains on longer than two hours, due to lack of hemostasis, the nurse must make sure there is adequate blood flow to the hand. Prolonged inflation at too high of a pressure can lead to radial artery occlusion. The goal is to have low pressure hemostasis, meaning just enough pressure to prevent bleeding but still maintain blood flow to the hand. Both aspects must be assessed frequently. When it is time to start letting the air out of the TR band, usually at the 60 minute or 120 minute mark after the sheath was removed in the cath lab. You will need the supplied syringe that came with the TR band kit. To remove air, keep pressure on the plunger or you may remove all the air inadvertently. When you are removing air from the TR band, if at any time re-bleeding or arm swelling occurs, you should reinstill air to the original amount in order to obtain hemostasis. Once hemostasis is regained, leave the band in place for one hour. After one hour, resume the process for air removal from the TR band after this time period. If at any time, hemostasis is not achieved with the TR band, remove the band and apply manual pressure to obtain hemostasis. If you are having difficulty obtaining hemostasis, do not leave the patient or stop holding pressure. Have someone call your charge RN or the cath lab or the rapid response team or the administrator on duty. If the patient is bleeding, do not stop holding pressure. Hold pressure for 20 minutes without peeking at the site. After 20 minutes, slowly release pressure and reassess for bleeding. If re-bleeding occurs, continue the 20-minute cycles until hemostasis is obtained. If you have to reapply the TR band after it has been removed, note that there is a green marker, which should be positioned 2 to 3 millimeters proximal to the skin puncture site. Once hemostasis is obtained and all air has been removed from the TR band, leave the TR band in place and monitored for a short period of time. If bleeding occurs, the band can be inflated immediately. Once hemostasis has been verified, 
A sterile dressing is applied to the puncture site, and a wrist board should be applied to limit pronation of the affected extremity. The dressing should not be so bulky as to obscure signs of bleeding. The coband should not be so tight as to impede any circulation. A band-aid or 2x2 two two with a tegaderm should suffice. BPs of the affected arm should be avoided for 24 hours. The patient should receive instructions to be gentle with the affected wrist for the next 48 hours. Do not push yourself out of the chair, pick up anything heavy, or bend the wrist for the next two days. A wrist immobilizer can be used to remind the patient to not use the wrist. Teach the patient if they noticed bleeding or swelling at any time, to press the call light, and where to hold pressure on the wrist until the nurse arrives. Following these guidelines, along with frequent assessments for hemostasis and adequate circulation, will lead to better patient outcomes. Additionally, patient and or family member education can play a key role in success. Thank you for your time and attention in this important endeavor.